Okay. Just like to get back over here. We quoted a bright Gemara quoted a brayso. Tridul hotonu rabbanon the ofchai bimno lemolo. A father is obligated to circumcise his child, the lefdoso, to redeem him pigeon aben. Lamdo Torah to teach him Torah la siyuisha. To marry him off. To locate a wife for his son. Lamdo womanist to teach him a trade. Yeshoma aflashito b'mayim. Others say even to teach him how to swim. Rebu do Omer kosheinum lamdo is no umnis. Rebu says a person does not teach his son a trade. Melamdo listus, he's teaching him to be a bandit. Zemar asks, listus solkadaito, does he teach him to be a bandit? Elo kiilum lamdo listus, if he doesn't provide him with a livelihood, it's the equivalent of what encouraging him to be a thief, a bandit, a highwayman, because he has no means to earn a living. Just like to get back, the Mishnah says that a woman is absolved regarding mitzvah sasechus mangaroma. If it's a time determined mitzvah, so Rashi says, what's mitzvah sasechus mangaroma? Rashi says, the zman is goreim. The time is the cause of the, of the mitzvah. Sukkah, tzitzis, these are examples of mitzvah sasechus mangaroma. There's a, a position of tosus. The Gemara says in Chagiga and other locations, the mitzvah of smicha. There's a mitzvah that when you bring a korban, certain korbans, you have to lean on the korban. So the Gemara says, the somach v'shochat, that the person who brings the korban has to lean on the korban. So the Gemara says, what about if a woman brings a korban? A woman has no obligation. Because when it speaks about smicha, it says, b'nei Yisrael. So the Gemara says, b'nei Yisrael v'lo b'not Yisrael. A man has an obligation to lean on the korban, not a woman. A woman's not even permitted to lean on the korban. Mar says, Akfi Yodayu, they just put their hands over the korban. But leaning, she's not permitted because it's considered, actually, it's like riding an animal that's been consecrated. Mishtamish Mikotchim, if you put your, the majority of your weight, Smicha's putting the majority of your weight on the animal and you lean on it, so she's not permitted because there's no mitzvah to lean on the animal. Only a man is permitted. So the Mar has a discussion. What about a woman? Leaning, doing smicha on behalf of a husband. Meaning, in terms of her own korban, she's exempt. She brings a korban, she doesn't lean. What about if a, 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 hus- a man brings a korban and he doesn't do the smicha? Could his wife lean on the korban on his behalf? It's like ishto kugufo. So the Gemara says, no. Now the question is why? Well, well, no, 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 no. It's not even shlichos. They're like one and the same. So Tosis explains, because it's mitzvah seshes mangurama. One, one interpretation of Tosis. Why is it mitzvah seshes mangurama? Because we rule that take if the smicha shchita. That immediately after the smicha, you have to do the shchita. Now a korban can only be brought during the daytime. Correct? You can't bring a, a korban cannot be brought at nighttime because the Mordechai says in Zvachim it says biyom zivcho. On the day that you slaughter the animal by kochim. So the korban can only be brought at, during the daytime. So to do smicha at nighttime, you're not able to smicha at nighttime because if you do it at nighttime, the korban will be brought during the daytime. So there's a, a lapse, there's an interruption between the smicha and the shechita. Okay? Mm-hmm. So Tosa says, so do smicha right before dawn. Do smicha before dawn and do shechita immediately after dawn. There's no interruption. 
So Tosis says, no, because you have to bring Tobit Shel Shachar. Before you bring your private korban, you must bring the, the communal offering first. So there's, again, there's an interruption. So since there's no way to have the smicha at night time under any circumstance, therefore it's mitzvah zeshman groma. Okay, that's, that's Tosis. It's over there. What's the, why can you not have smicha? Why smicha? Why smicha must be done during the day? Is because the time is the cause, cause of the issue? It's because since you cannot have an interruption between smicha and shechita, because take of the smicha shechita, that's the reason. Yet Tosas classifies that as a mishnah among Roma. So we see, according to Tosas, that as long as time is the cause, even though it's not the direct cause, even indirectly, that is why you're not able to do the smicha. That's classified as mitzvahs among Roma. Tosa, Rashi seems to say that time is the, is, the, is the basis for the mitzvah. The base of mitzvah is not, is not smicha. The base of mitzvah is not, is not time over there. So Rashi, it's the circumstance. There's the circumstance. The Rashi would hold that Sitzis would not be... No, 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 no. Sitzis definitely is mitzvah. The, 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 the crux of the mitzvah is to put the... Terse is a reason also. Right, a reason. Says you're obligated in tzitzis when you're able to see the tzitzis. That's daytime. The Torah says day determines the mitzvah. Day and not night. Right? But That's uh, a but the mitzvah is putting the tzitzis on the four, four No, 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 you're, not, you're missing the point. All right. the tor- where does the Torah say that you can't do smicha at nighttime? The Torah never said you can't do smicha at night. You can't do smicha at nighttime. It's the circumstance. Because since you can't have an interruption to shechita, therefore you must have smicha during the daytime. What? Rashi holds smicha is not mitzvah zman grom. Not mud. She should be qualified to do smicha. So Tosis has another answer over there. There's a puzzle which is a miut. Just as I say, b'nei shol v'nos yisrael, Tosis has two pshat, two two understandings. The first thing Tosis says is mitzvah zman grom. The second thing says no. Based on the puzzle where the Torah, the puzzle expresses itself, a woman is not qualified, even on her husband's korban. So Rashi would have to learn like the second teretz, the second explanation of Tosas over there. Okay? How Rashi There's no relevance to this. Phil, are you permitted to wear tefillin on Shabbos? It's everybody. So it's Mr. Van Grama. Six days a week you wear tefillin on Shabbos, you don't wear tefillin. So that's a time-determined mitzvah. Shabbos, you're not permitted to wear tefillin. Yom Tov, you're not permitted to wear tefillin. Same idea, whether it's day seven days you sit in the sukkah. Second day, seven days you sit in the sukkah, correct? At a certain time of the year. A woman's not obligated in sukkah. Because, the, because that period is what causes the obligation. Same thing. The six days of the week cause the obligation. It's the seventh day, you have no obligation. Okay? What are you saying? About filling. No, 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 no. Shabbos, definitely not. What? No, that's something else. That's, that's the mitzvah sifas kavon, mitzvah in sifas kavon. We're talking wearing it as a mitzvah, as a mitzvah. Okay. The Mishnah says, "Kol mitzvahs asay shazman grama anoshim chayovim v'noshim turos." Now, what did you say? Kol mitzvahs asay shazman grama anoshim turos. What do you have to tell me? Men are chayiv. If men macha, who else would be chayiv? This is men. You could say. You could say to contrast it. A man is obligated to mitzvahs shazman grama. A woman's exempt. But really, it's not necessary to say it's understood. You say, "Kol mitzvahs shazman grama anoshim turos." So it's understood. We're saying she's exempt. So who's chayiv? A man's chayiv. So why is it important to emphasize komitzes mangroma and noshim chayovim? As I saw, somebody cites an interpretation of pshat that there's a machlokas in Baba Kamo and also kedushin later whether sumas chayiv mitzvus psalchim. A person's blind. Does he have an obligation to keep mitzvus? Review this position is sumas potum in a mitzvahs. 
Basuma has no obligation. So Rabbi Yosef, who was blind, originally had said that anybody would rule like Rabbi Huda to tell me that as soon as put the mitzvahs, I'll make a, 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 I'll declare it to be a yomtik. Why? Because here I have no obligation, and yet I keep mitzvahs. Because God will shayni mitzvah oseh, mishim mitzvah oseh. Great is the one who's not obligated, than the one who is obligated and performs. If you perform when you're obligated, it's understood, you have no choice. So the, but then Rav Yosef had heard, God will, in the name of Rav Hanina, God will mitzvah oseh, yos mishayni mitzvah oseh. So now he said, no. Now we would make a Yom Tov if they would say the halacha is not, is what? It's not like Rabbi Yudah. That is Chayif. Okay? So with their Tosas and Bava Kama, that even if, according to Rabbi Yudah, that as soon as Potter bin Amitzvos, but rabbinically he's obligated to keep mitzvos. Why is he obligated to keep mitzvos? Because if he'd not be obligated to keep mitzvos, he'd be like a goy. He'd have no obligation whatsoever. He could do anything he wants. He could anything he wants. Time, he's not bound by anything. He's exempt. Therefore, even Rabbi would agree, rabbinically, he's chayuf. So that's what the Mishnah was saying over here. Mitzvah sasei, shizman groma, anoshim chayovim. That that we're emphasizing, anoshim chayovim, is, is alluding, according to Rabbi Yehuda, even Rabbi Yehuda, that uh, even though sum is part of mitzvos, but on a rabbinic level, he's anoshim chayovim. So Tos over there asks, but we find that a woman is exempt from mitzvahs as my grandma. So it says, of course, because she has other mitzvahs, that she's able to live as a Jew. But it, when Rabbi Yudah says a, a, a blind person is exempt from mitzvahs, means all mitzvahs. So therefore, it's either all or nothing. So how do you, how do, how do you differentiate? Therefore, if it's a man, he's obligated to all the mitzvahs going to Rabbi Yudah. Discussion tomorrow. Okay. would make a bracha. Correct. Even according to the Mechaber. Even according to the Mechaber. Even according to the Mechaber. So Tos himself, because Tos points this out, because, because we're saying a woman has no obligation. Even rabbinically she has no obligation. Okay? So if she chooses, she can't do the mitzvah. But can, can do is not a basis to obligate, to permit one to say a bracha. But here rabbinically he's obligated. Look, it's no different than uh, the Gemara the Gemara Shabbos. The Mara says, you know, you say bracha on, uh, on Hadlokas near Hanukkah. The Mara says, we say, Sivanu, Hechen Sivanu. Where are we obligated? We, who, who dictates the obligation? It's only rabbinical. The Mara cites Psukim. Al Titesh Torasi Mecho. Right? The Mara cites Psukim. No, that's a sh- question. Even though says he's not obligated. Even though says he's not. Okay. It's interesting. According to Rebuda. According to Rebuda. It's a question. Maybe and he mentioned something. Maybe it's only Mitzvah Sasei. He's exempt. Los to say yes. Maybe even Los say he, he's not able to. He's not obligated to keep. It's like a Shota. Like a Shota. The Gemara does, doesn't get into it. The Gemara doesn't get into it. Okay, we'll, we'll get to it. Okay. Now, how do we know a woman is exempt from Mila? So the Gemara cited a postdoc, Kashetziva Oso Valokim. So the Gemara says, Oso Valo Oso. It's an exclusion. A, ma- a man is obligated, but not a woman. Okay? So we discussed on Friday, Tosas Kasha. What do we need a posuk to say a woman is exempt? It's Mr. Zman Grumma. Because meal is only Bishmini. So Tosis answers. Let's see Tosis inside. Next to the bottom Tosis. Yeshlam cave to be on my Shmini Vola Ain Law Hefsik. Once the obligation begins, it may begin on the eighth day, but once it begins, it continues uninterruptedly. Loves man grumma. That's like classified as man grumma. That's the called the time is the cause. It's only when it's like a, a person's bar mitzvah. He's only obligated in, in, in mitzvahs when he's 13. But once he's obligated, he's obligated for the rest of his life. Mila is only valid only if you circumcise during the day. If you circumcise, not, it's, not, it's not a valid Mila. So, so it still should be classified as Mrs. Magromo. 
It's similar to Sukkah. Sukkah is why? Sukkah seven days. Or Lulav. Lulav is says Magrama because it's only during the day and not at night time. The Yishlom Arstosa says an answer, which is a Dochek. That Al Gamar is going according to the opinion, which is not a halachic opinion, that if you do circumcision at nighttime, Mila, it's valid. But according, as we rule that Mila at night is not valid, we don't need a Pasuk to exclude a woman because this is a man grama. Right? That's, that's, that's Tosa's answer. Okay, so there's a famous Shagrasarya uh, on Tosa's. He has difficulty with Tosis. Tosis says that Milo, because Mila at night time is not valid, therefore it's classified as a Mishra Zaz Magrama. Now, is Mila similar to any other Mishra Zaz Magrama? Now, a person has an obligation to take the Lulav on the first day of Sukkot, let's say in the base of Mikdosh. Seven day obligation. First day you have an obligation. Now, you can only fulfill the obligation during the daytime, not at night time. The second day, Sukkot. Is that the obligation of the first day? It's a new obligation. Every day you have an obligation, seven consecutive days to take the Lulav in the Beis HaMikdush. So what determines this mitzvah? Time. Time is, is, is a determinating factor. Correct? Every day, the day of Sukkot obligates you to take the Lulav. The mitzvah of Milo. person obligated to sick himself on the eighth day. He didn't do it on the eighth day, you are on the ninth day. The obligation of the ninth, is this a new obligation? Or the fifteenth? It's the same obligation. The Torah just tells you at night, if you do it at night, it's not valid. But it's the same obligation. Once the eighth day co- happens, it continues. It's, a, it's the same continuous obligation. So there, it's not the time dictates the obligation, but rather, the time over there, once the time comes, the obligation continues. However, this obligation you cannot perform at night time. He says, that's not Mitzvah Sessim Magroma. It's not similar to all the other Mitzvah Sessim Magroma in the Torah. Again, you have to take, let's say, sitting in the su- sukkah. person didn't sit in the sukkah for seven days this year. Next year, when he sits in the sukkah, does it have any relevance to the previous year? Every year it is no obligation. Seven day period you must sit in the sukkah. Right? A person that has circumcised himself on the eighth day, now he's 80 years old. He's still not circumcised. Does he have an obligation still to circumcise himself? He's still alive. Yes. Is this a new obligation or is this the same obligation he's been carrying his whole life? The same obligation. What about if he'd want to do this mitzvah at night time? Is he permitted? It's not valid. But in terms of the obligation of Mila, at night he's still obligated to circumcise himself. He still has the obligation at this moment, except today he's not able to. I'll give you an example. What about Mila Shalobazmana? Mila Shalobazmana is not Docha Shabbos. Right? Let's say you, you hold, according to the Mandi Omar, that Mila Balayla is valid, as Tosa cites in such an opinion. Okay? Mila Shalobazmana, could you circumcise a, a child on, the, on Shabbos? No. Right? It's Kilo Shabbos, Nisador Isa. But if it's Nisador Isa, you're not able to circumcise him on Shabbos, it should be a Mishnah says Mangrama. Why is Shabbos any different than nighttime? There is a difference. No, 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 no. The obligation began on the eighth day. Same thing. The obligation begins. You're not permitted to circumcise him on Shabbos. So. No. At nighttime. You're obligated, but you're not permitted. It's not that you're not permitted. No, it's not. That there's a difference. Shabbos, you're not permitted. What happens if you do? Here at night, it's not a time of meal. If you do it, it's not a valid meal. It is. I mean, it's Mrs. Magrum. It's a Mitzvah Bobavero. That's the discussion. Right? But over here, at night, it's not a valid meal. If he, if he does it at night, he has to circumcise him over. He has to eat a top of Dambris. Right? So that, that's the question. Tosa's position is that even though it may be the same obligation, but if the obligation cannot be a- executed at any period of time, that's classified as Mr. Zangrama. So Shaq said the difficulty is, but this, what he's saying here, is not comparable to anything else we have in the Torah in terms of what a Mr. Zangrama is. 
Right? It's not comparable to tzitzis, to sukkah, to lulav. What do you mean you can't wear it at night? Tara says you have no obligation at night. You have no obligation to wear tzitzis at night time. You want to wear tzitzis at night? Are you permitted to wear tzitzis? At night? You're permitted to wear. Yeah. But it has no value. Right? It has no value. Of course, the mitzvah is only a daytime mitzvah, not a nighttime mitzvah. So that's, that's what it's supposed to be about. Again, it's, it's different. Your obligation to wear the tzitzis on day one and day two, is that the same obligation? Whenever you wear this garment, you must wear tzitzis. Every day is a different obligation. It's the same obligation that you were obligated on day day for the rest of his life until he does the circumcision. There's no relevance to Mrs. Magroma. Everybody agrees to do the circumcision, definitely. There's a separate question. Is there also a mitzvah to be circumcised? But well, well, why is it relevant to this? Oh, if he did it at night time. Yeah. No, no, no. He needs to tell us Sorry. Once he's an orel, he's not called not an orel even if he moves the, the, the uh, foreskin. Once yeah, the eighth day comes, he never, he never that, that never he's still called orel. The Torah says, Milo causes a transition from orel to non orel. But if it's not called Milo, let's say a non Jew would do the Milo. So then the person's never yoked that. So yeah, no, he does a tough He lets blood. The letting of the blood is the equivalent of, of the bris itself. And if someone, for whatever reason, decides he wants to sew it back on or whatever, kind of sew it, then he's. No, it's unnatural. No, no, no. He's no, said he's guilty of having a bris. That, that's called it. That's, that's Moshe Horolos, so it's something else. Okay. He's not permitted. He's not real. He's not permitted. He's not permitted. The Gemara says, "Meso echov machmas milo." Two of his brothers died when they were circumcised. So, we we rule if it's a question of pikuach nefesh. Two is a chazoka. So he's not permitted to be circumcised. It's Torah violation to circumcise him. He's not permitted to and he no, but he's not permitted to eat or come pesach. Factually, he's an oreo. He has a foreskin. He's not, he's not liable. He's nonus. He's nonus. It's pikuach nefesh. But he, what's his classification? Is he an oriel or not an oriel? He's an oriel. If the Torah says he's not allowed to have a bris... Because the Torah says that a child, a person who has a, a foreskin, right. he's called an oriel. Right, but he, he can't have a... He can't so what? Does not make a difference? A person doesn't have water to bathe. Could he go see the king? No, we're not faulting him, but factually, he's not fit to to come to before the king if he's not if he has if, if he's not clean. So, so he is, he is not high of course. Not high of course. He's an oriole, correct? Now, would you say that this man who is a regular man is not circumcised at night is an oriole, but not high of course? No, he is high of course. He can't, he can't <gasps> He should have done it on what's... A person is liable for chorus until he circumcises himself. So, yeah, you have the chorus. Chorus, once it happens, it happens. A person says you've been excised from God until you reinstate yourself. How do you reinstate yourself? By circumcising yourself. So, therefore, you're outside until you're inside. So, how do you, admi- how you, do you gain admittance? You have to have to circumcise yourself. Even though he's not able to. I want to. So good. No, 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 no. no. It's not comparable. Him Phil never had an obligation. Him Phil never had an obligation to circumcise himself. This person had an obligation to circumcise himself. That's the difference. 
Torah said there you're not permitted ever to circumcise yourself. Here the Torah says you must circumcise yourself. Now you have to be at a point, uh, at a point if you do it, it has no value. But the obligation already came upon the person. He's doing, the, he's doing the wrong thing. He's doing, an he's doing an Avera, of course he's doing. He's p- putting his life in jeopardy. He may die from it. And he doesn't die. He's yeah, but again, if he doesn't die, so he didn't die. But he still did the wrong thing. A person jumps off a building to commit suicide, and he doesn't die. Did he do the wrong thing? Of course he did the wrong thing. He happened to live. A miracle happened. He lived. Because he factually circumcised himself. Okay. The Ran, which I said it over, I didn't say it over accurately. The Ran answers Tosis differently. The Ran says that at the question is, what do we need uh, an exclusion for the woman? It's mysticism and grammar. He explains like this. Every mysticism and grammar. Torah says you must take a lulav, you must, you must sit in the sukkah. That's considered, that mitzvah is incumbent upon the person which relates to the person himself, not to anybody else. That's your personal mitzvah. What about doing a mitzvah to a third party? That's not the classical case of mitzvah and mangrama. Correct? So I would say maybe for that, a woman's not exempt. The basis to, 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 to absolve a woman mitzvah and mangrama, that's only something that relates to her personally. That's her personal obligation, unrelated to anybody else. But something which has relevance to a third party, like a father circumcising his, his, his child, maybe there she's not exempt. If I need the post, so we'll also, that even, nevertheless, she's still, she's still exempt. But let's add, have another situation, which Mara's going to say, how do I know a woman is exempt from Pijin Aben, from redeeming her a child? Mara also cites a post. Same idea, because it's the obligation of the parent to a third party. It's not her personal obligation which relates to herself. Okay? Oh, so that's it. That's, that's oh, so below so. That's oh, so below so. Correct. Further. It, said, it says in the Brysa, father has an obligation to redeem his child. Mm-hmm. Live though so. Do you have any questions? There's a Tori Evan, which is the Shaykh said, also he discussed the mitzvah of, of Bikurim, bringing Bikurim. He cites to Machluk Sushan whether a woman has an obligation to bring Bikurim. So, um, he cites the Chinuch. The Chinuch says that a woman is Petura, is absolved, because one only brings Bikurim in Kil Hanukkah. Right? It, through Sukkot, you may be the Kore. You bring the Bikurim, also you make your declaration. After Sukkot, it's maybe vein of Kore. You bring the Bikurim, and one does not make the declaration. But to what point do you bring Bikurim? Only until Hanukkah. So, so the Chinuch says, it's a mitzvah, it's mangrama. <laughs> so you see, it's limited to a specific time of the year. You're able to bring Bikurim. So the, so the Shanturi Evan asks on the Chinuch, he says, seemingly has no realms to mitzvah says my grandma. Why can, can now, why does one not bring Bikurim after Hanukkah? So, because, because there's nothing left in the field. It's just based on these, it's based on nature. If there'd be crops in the field, you'd bring Bikurim t- uh, 12 months a year. So there it's the circumstance. It's not the mitzvah. There the mitzvah is based on the circumstance. On Teva. Mitzvah is my grandma in the Torah says that you could, you could take, the Torah would say you could take the love 12 months a year. It would have relevance to 12 months. Torah says no, it's limited to a period of time. Sit in the sukkah during this period of time. Sit is only when you're able to see it. Torah could have said you could wait since, you're obligated since 24 hours a day. Correct? But over here, this is based on the fact there's no produce in the field after Hanukkah. Therefore, he says, it's not a mitzvah in my grandma. This has no relevance to Mitzvah and Magroma, and the woman would be obligated. Okay. Liftoso. Minolon. How do we know father has an obligation to redeem his child, Pidin Aben? Vichsiv kol Bechor Bonecho Tivde. Right, Torah says, Bechor Bonecho, the firstborn of your sons, you should redeem. 
Vehechod lo parkei avua mechayiv iu lemifrakei. What about if his father did not fulfill his obligation of redeeming his son? How do we know he has an obligation on himself to serve himself himself and to to redeem himself? Okay, dechsiv podo ti pode. No, I know, right? Ti pode. So if you take a look in Rashi. See? He shall be redeemed. Take a look at the Bach. It says Tifte. Right, I understand. So good, so it has to do with the Gemara. If a word can be read, it's, it's not even Tifte. You go both. As long as they're not contradictory. If you have a word which is not contradictory, like sukkah, it would be contradictory. Correct? How do we know sukkah has to have two walls and, uh, and the third wall is a tefach? Of course, it says, we, ho- we f- over there it says sukkos, sukkah, sukkah, sukkos. Correct? So over there, we say so sukkos, mole is two. Sukkah, choser is one and one. Over there, if you would s- interp- go after the mikra and the mesoros, what would it be? It would be contradiction. Either it's six walls or it's four walls. can't be both. Here, tifte tibodeh, they're not contradictory. The way it's read and the way it's spelt, it's, it's not a contradiction. So when it's not a contradiction between the Kri and the Ksiv, you interpret both of them. So over here you read it, tifte, but tibodeh. That's the way it's read. I mean, the, 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 the Mesores is tibodeh. But the way it, the Mikra, the way we read it, is tifte. How do we know a woman is not obligated in redeeming her son? Only a father. If a person has an obligation to redeem himself, you have an obligation to redeem others. Kosha Ainu Mutsu Liftos is Atzmo. Ainu Mutsu Liftos Acherim. Samar asks, the E Menolan Lum Chayv Lifrik Nafsha. How do we know that a woman has no obligation to redeem herself? We're saying, she has no obligation to redeem her son because only the one has an obligation to redeem himself has an obligation to redeem his son. But how do we know she has no obligation to redeem herself? Dechsev, Tifte Pitop, Tifte Tipodech. With, if someone else has no obligation to redeem you, then you have an obligation to redeem yourself. But if others have no obligation to redeem him, how do we know the father has no obligation to redeem his daughter if she's a firstborn? You're only obligated to redeem the Bukhar Bonecho, Bonecho Lobino Secho. Your sons are not your daughters. So that's. No, 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 no. But uh, maybe she still has an obligation to redeem her son. Even though the father is not obligated to redeem her, maybe she has an obligation to redeem her son. What's the exclusion? So it's Tifte Tipode. Right? Who has an obligation to redeem? The one who is obligated to be redeemed. So that we conclude. And how do we know a woman has no obligation to rede- be redeemed? Because it says, The first of your sons, not your daughters. No, be- over here, there's no best because Torah says, for Bilo, the Torah says, Himo Lochem, Kol Zohar. You should circumcise any male that's uncircumcised, has to be circumcised. We quote three psukim. Right? So, Himo Lochem, Kol Zohar, that's going on the Tzibor. That's on Bezdi. No, no, it has no relevance to this. Himo Lochem, Kol Zohar is speaking to 
You should circumcise all males. And how do we know the person himself? Because it says the one who doesn't circumcise himself is liable for Koritz. That's only a person who's uncircumcised. Okay. Limited to pigeon I've been. No, no, definitely. No, no. We're going to have the same, same, uh, same type of understanding. We're going to teach Torah to your child. How do we know a woman doesn't have an obligation to teach a Torah to her child? Somewhere says because she's not obligated to study, <coughs> to learn herself. But ha and how do you know she has no obligation to study? So the Mars bring a similar psukim as regarding pigeon I've been. Some. To be, to be to no, but that's, well, that's going on the father. Right, that's the father to the child. The father to the child would, but you might think that the woman would have to do it up. Right, so right. Take a look in Tosis. Bottom Tosis. Tosis. I mean, it's, it's simple. I mean, if you know, and love me, I will be for Navsha, the chief. Says you only obligate to redeem you, the sons and not the women, the girls. Shlom of That's a personal obligation. Therefore, we need the posuk tifte tipode. Okay. Bar mitzvah. Bar mitzvah. Till then he has no obligation. Same thing with the bris. Question regarding the study of Torah. Okay, we discussed this. It, uh, it's not simple. You know, mitzvah schinuch has the shayla. Um, we had the gemara says that if a person steals a mitzvah from another person, right? Kisi adam. Torah says. The shochat v'chiso. You slaughter either a bird or an undomesticated animal. He has an obligation to cover its blood. What happens if a person slaughters? So whose mitzvah is it? Whoever the shochet is, it's his obligation to cover the blood. Third party comes and covers the blood. What's the halacha? So rabbinically, they penalize the person who stole the mitzvah, who denied the rightful party of the mitzvah, ten zuvim, ten gold coins. Right? That's, that's the Gemara. Okay, so the question is, what about Bilo? So there's, there's a famous rush. What about circumcision? So the rush in Chulin discusses a case. There's a machlok, famous machlokis between the Shach and the Ktos that is Milo Mitzvah Shebegufo. Could a father delegate his obligation to a third party to do Milo? Okay, it's a question. Is a Mitzvah Shebegufo Matzah? Could you delegate a person to eat Matzah on your behalf? That's a personal Mitzvah. You must eat the Matzah. So maybe similarly, that when the Torah says a father must circumcise his son, it's the father, it's something which can be delegated or can be delegated. So they want to bring a proof from the rush that it cannot be delegated. Why? Because it says that the father appoints a, a moel to do the milah, and a third party goes and t does the milah, the third party does not have to pay a sort so you see, clearly, so they bring a proof from the rush. If, in fact, it was delegated through the first person, and the first person is the shliach of the father, so when the th third party takes it, does it, it was not the shliach of the father, he denied the father the mitzvah. He should have to pay ten zuvim to the father. So you see, clearly, that it cannot be delegated. That the moel is not the shliach of the father. That's the proof they want to bring from the rush. To be continued.